Christmas carol service at South Ockenden Hospital. Each year, the residents and staff of this hospital have celebrated Christmas just like their neighbours in the nearby towns and villages of South Essex. People have attended carol services here since the hospital was first built over 60 years ago. But Christmas 1993 was a rather special celebration. There was the usual Christmas lunch with staff serving the residents in fancy dress, but just three months later, South Ockenden Hospital was to close and the remaining residents were to move to new homes in neighbouring communities. This is the story of South Ockenden Hospital, a place that for thousands of people will simply be remembered as home. Our story begins in Victorian times, in the early 1900s. This was a period of high unemployment and West Ham Council bought Little Mullins Farm to create a farm colony in which the unemployed could be taught a trade. A few years later, local councils were required to provide accommodation, generally in hospitals, for people with what we now call learning disabilities. West Ham decided to build a new hospital on the farm site. Consisting of three brick villas called Rowans, Limes and Elms, the new hospital was completed in 1932 and was opened by the mayor of West Ham, Alderman Scoulding. It wasn't long before the hospital was in the front line of the Battle of Britain. A local historian who's written a book about South Ockenden Hospital takes up the story. The Battle of Britain took place right over the top of here and over into Kent, of course. In fact, on one particular day, it's rather fascinating that in, in the matron superintendent's logbook, we do find an entry for the 7th of September, where she's saying that the oil tanks, you can see the oil tanks are alight at Thameshaven, just down the valley here. And, and she mentions a violent aerial battle going on overhead, and that was Douglas Bader himself coming in with his big wing up from Duxford uh, to enter the Battle of Britain um, on that particular day as they bombed London. One villa actually received a direct hit, not from a German bomb, but from a stray shell fired by a local anti-aircraft battery. That was Lyons Villa, the children's villa. And it was rather fortunate, actually, because a c only a couple of days before, a bomb had fallen quite close to Lyons, and they had eva evacuated it because it was an unexploded one. And I think that if that unexploded bomb hadn't fallen and the evacuation taken place, all of those children might have been in there at the time that the shell hit two days later. In the years that followed the Second World War, South Ockenden Hospital expanded rapidly. In 1948, it became part of the National Health Service, and by the mid-1950s, the number of people living at South Ockenden had risen to about a 1,000. In due course, the hospital had its own school for children who were living here. The Duchess of Gloucester opened the Gloucester Clinic, a medical treatment and research centre. The hospital even had its own scout and guide troops. But one of the high spots in the history of South Ockenden was a visit by the Queen Mother in 1960 to open a new training school for nurses and four new villas. During her visit, she met staff and local dignitaries. She was accompanied by the tall and imposing Matron Calder, seen here on the left. The matron was known as the Grey Lady because of the colour of her uniform. One of the villas the Queen Mother opened in 1960 was Pines Villa. Thirty years later, just before the hospital closed, Pines was boarded up and preserved for a while, almost as a time capsule. Inside, with the windows covered, it was dark and dusty, but it served to remind us of what life was like for generations of residents at South Ockenden Hospital. Conditions were somewhat austere. Residents lived in long dormitories, there was little privacy. Even the showers only had half-length curtains. By contrast, in the last few months at South Ockenden, Beach Villa was transformed into a model home with a really warm atmosphere. The villa was modernised and improved, and the key to its success was that every resident was provided with a single bedroom in which to sleep. It's more 
um, privacy and more, it's more that you can do what you want in your own room. Part it's um, like being independent as well, you look after all your own stuff. And if anything that goes missing, anything gets broken, it's down to you. What do you like best of all about living on beach? Going there. Where, where do you go? I like to work and I like to play and play in. Out for outings? Yeah. And do you like going on outings? Yeah. But despite the improvements, residents of South Ockenden Hospital still didn't have real control over their own lives. For that, they needed to be cared for in the community. But what should care in the community be like? Well, what should happen in the community is that people live in ordinary houses, just like the rest of us, like you and me, um, and be part of a street or clothes or whatever, like anybody else, and be accepted by the neighbours like anybody else. They should also be able to go and use the shops, the local shops, and have all the opportunities and take the risks also of being in the community, going to the um, local leisure centre, make sure that they are able to go to the pub, all those sorts of things. But before the move to care in the community could be made, a lot of preparation was needed and a good deal of training. Staff at South Ockenden who were transferring to new jobs in community care needed to learn new skills. In this training session, they're trying to decide how best to cope with the various challenges and difficulties that may arise in the community. Holding someone down very firmly in response to aggression is <coughs> unacceptable. The switch from care at South Ockenden to care in the community didn't happen overnight. It was a gradual process. Residents moved out to new homes over a period of many months. At this house in Brad Close, on the edge of the old hospital site, former residents from South Ockenden live in a very pleasant environment, in their own rooms, with caring support, and a whole range of modern conveniences, like this sink unit, that can be raised or lowered to the most convenient height. Here at Medina Road, former residents of South Ockenden Hospital live in an ordinary house in an ordinary street, and they're treated just like any other local residents. At Mount Nessing Road, there are excellent indoor facilities, like this bath that can be adjusted to any height for people with physical disabilities, and wonderful outdoor facilities, including this beautiful garden. But the key to a fulfilling life isn't just a home in the community. It isn't simply a question of being near your friends and relatives. It's about doing interesting things and making a valuable contribution.